Hello and welcome back. This is topic 2.1. This is an introduction to topic 2, which is all about biomolecules. So in this topic, we'll kind of get an introduction to all these molecules and basically to kind of just get a sense of what we're dealing with in topic 2. So here you'll see all the guidance, understandings, everything that IV expects you to know. If you want to kind of pause and take a look at everything that you're supposed to get out of this subtopic. So first things first, what is molecular biology? Molecular biology is the study of the relationship between life and all the molecules that constitute it. So basically throughout this unit, we're going to be looking at the different molecules, atoms, the bonds, everything that makes up life. Not so much life itself, but rather everything, all the parts that play and kind of culminate into this thing that we know as life. So right off the bat, one of the most important concepts is organic compounds. Organ organic compounds are compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen. So as you'll see here, carbon um, is at element number six. It has six protons. Um, usually it can vary the neutrons depending on the isotope, but usually you can see that since we have an average, an average atomic weight of 12, it's usually six neutrons and then six electrons. So carbon is very unique in that it has four valence electrons. So when you draw the outer shell electrons, if you remember from chemistry a little bit, this is what it'll look like, the Lewis dot structure. And basically what's happening here is this is signifying that carbon can make four bonds. And since carbon can make four covalent bonds, what's going to happen is, is carbon is going to be able to bond with a lot of different things. And basically this is going to give rise to all the properties that we'll see. Right off the bat, there are some subgroups that you should know in order to, in identifying different molecules. So OH, if you see an OH, that's going to be a hydroxyl group. If you see NH2, that's an amine. If you see a COOH, um, it's not always written like this, but basically if you see a um, COOH, it's going to be a carboxyl group, and then CH3 is a methyl group. So carbohydrates are the first category, and basically this is going to be um, what we know as like sugars and um, starches, cellulose, all these different molecules that contain simil some um, formula similar to C H two N. So say if we say it's two C N H two N O N. So basically, what you're going to be looking for is um, it can be a ring, or it can also be as shown here, or it can also be um, a linear molecule. But basically, those carbon and oxygens are going to want to kind of be equal. You're going to want um, the same number, and then basically the hydrogen will sometimes be sometimes less, but usually double this carbon. So right off. Here are some of the molecules that IB wants you to know. So these are glucose. And there's two types of glucose. And you sh you'll, one is alpha and one is beta. And basically they're the same exact thing except for if you can see these two things circled in blue, there's going to be hydrogen and then that um, hydroxyl group. These are going to be switched. And what switching them does is it changes later on when you form polymers. So this alpha, um, this alpha glucose is going to not form as, is going to form looser um, bonds and basically what's going to happen is this structure is going to be what we know as starch and this will be easier to break down by the digestive system. But beta, this um, configuration makes a much tighter structure such as cellulose and this is why humans have a harder time breaking down cellulose because of those tight bonds and that's also why plants use it in order to build their cell walls. And then the last molecule that you'll need to know in order to you actually you should also you should be able to draw all three of these is ribose, and this you might know is similar or was used in DNA and RNA um, or ribonucleic acid, and this is the sugar backbone. So just be able to draw all these. You might maybe like pause the video and then draw those. Oh. So then we move on to the second category, which is lipids. Now lipids you might notice that they're kind of similar to the, um, the carbohydrate structure. They do have a lot of the hydrogens and the carbons, but what you'll notice is the oxygens are definitely not proportional to the carbons. So if you'll see a carbon-hydrogen um, chain, what you're going to want to look for is the, the oxygens. The oxygens will kind of give away what exactly is going on here. Um, we'll talk more about saturated and unsaturated saturated later. But basically, saturated is going to be all single bonds. Unsaturated is when you have a double bond. When you look at um, fats versus oils, a fat will be solid at room temperature, like butters, while an oil will be liquid at room temperature. The next category is proteins and nucleic acids. Well, the next two categories. So first we, of all, we have proteins. Um, 
basically what you're gonna if you go back and look at those groups that we had we're gonna have an amine group a carboxyl group and a hydrogen all around the central carbon now this R group is going to vary depending on the type of amino acid and you won't necessarily you won't need to memorize all the R groups you just need to know that this is the general structure for a protein now um, or the for an amino acid which then builds up to proteins and then for our, so I guess this should um, more be um, amino acids and nucleic acids anyways so then we have nucleic acids over here now basically we're going to have that ribose or deoxyribose sugar backbone and then we're going to have the base which you know is adenine guanine thiamine or uracil and cytosine those will be over here in the bases and then you'll have this phosphate group on the edge actually going back what you want to notice is in carbohydrates you'll have um, carbon hydrogen oxygen those are the main um, molecules that you'll see. And the same thing with these over here, the lipids. When you get to proteins, you'll notice that we start introducing, introducing nitrogen. And actually, in some of the R groups, there's sulfur. So just remember, when we start getting into proteins or amino acids, we're getting nitrogen and sulfur. And now for um, um, nucleic acids, you'll notice that, again, we'll have the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. But now we also have an additional nitrogen and phosphorus. So you just kind of need to remember all the different types of elements that are being used here. So here's a question. Um, take, a, take a moment to pause and answer it. So what are the most frequent occurring elements in living organisms? So right off the bat, you'll think of your four basic molecules, carbohydrates, lipid, proteins, nucleic acids, and you'll start one looking and see what each one is composed of. So we know that carbon is in every single one. So you're going to look in no carbon, no carbon. You're down to these two. So now what else is there? Oxygen. Well, both of them have oxygen. Now hydrogen, every single one has a hydrogen, so that's going to lead you to D. You'll notice that this nitrogen is a common um, element between both amino acids and um, nucleic acids, whereas phosphorus here is only found really in um, nucleic acids. So that kind of gets us into reactions. How do these molecules interact? Well, we have two different types of interactions. We have anabolism and catabolism anabolic catabolic reactions this is what we're going to look at and this is basically um, yeah how these molecules interact so first of all anabolism is going to be the synthesis or the making of molecules while catabolism is going to be looking at the destruction if you kind of think of catastrophe destruction you'll kind of remember that catabolism is destruction so if we're going synthesis then we're going this way we're going to take two different molecules and form a bond between them Whereas if we go to catabolism or catabolic reaction, we're going to go the opposite way. Now, due to the, due to the nature of these molecules, uh, most of the time, if I go back to the carbohydrates, um, most of the times when you connect these two, you're going to be dealing with uh, oxygens and hydrogens. So when you have a synthesis reaction, basically what's going to happen is those, water, those um, hydrogens and those oxygens are going to come out, and you're going to actually get not only this polymer but you're also going to get plus a water because those um, hydrogens and oxygens are kind of released from the molecules in order to create the bonds now if we're going to catabolic reaction this is going to be known as um, hydrolysis and basically what's going to happen is you're going to actually oops, you're going to need a water molecule from the beginning and that water molecule is going to come and is going to be reattached to these molecules and creating those individual molecules. Now for right now you you don't need to have it all down at once because this will definitely be, definitely be covered over and over again as we look at the different reactions in between each molecules because it kind of um, differs slightly between a lipid or a carbohydrate or a nucleic acid. All these things kind of differ but basically you should know anabolic is creating, catabolic is breaking, um, condensation reactions are anabolic, catabolic reactions are hydrolysis and kind of know um, the basics of um, what each one is for. So anabolic is just basically synthesis of everything. Protein synthesis, DNA synthesis, carbohydrate synthesis, basically the making of molecules while catabolic is just breaking down. So this is digestion is the main um, where we kind of look at this. And down here you'll notice a picture of urea. Um, basically what I need you to know about this is that this is a compound that is synthesized by the body. And now what happens here is is we used to think that um, urea could not be made anywhere else in the body, I mean outside of the body. So it was kind of like a life force molecule. We needed the 
there was a force inside the body that um, required, um, or that urea was required to be made. However, we um, were finally able to make urea um, through artificial production. And basically what this told us was that the theory that organic molecules were only made in living organisms was false. So this vital principle in which we need there's some special thing to life in order to make organic molecules such as urea was kind of disbunked um, with this whole production of urea. So finally, the last thing you'll need to know for this kind of topic is metabolism. Now, don't, you don't be scared by this map. It's based, it's, um, this is basically what all the chemical reactions in a cell, it, when mapped out, look like. So you're going from one, um, one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. So metabolism is going to just be the net reactions. You're not really so much building and synthesizing or breaking down. It's just the net reactions. So while this may be um, a little overwhelming, just you all you need to know is that metabolism is the net sum of all reactions in the body. Or if you're looking at a single cell, if you're looking at a single process, say respiration, metabolism is this, the sum of all the reactions. So here's a free response question you might get. Um, the equation or the, uh, the equation below shows a production of glucose and galactose from lactose. Now we'll get into those separately, but basically all you need to know here is that we're going from one to two. We're breaking down. So this is going to be a catabolic reaction or a hydrolysis reaction. A second one. Distinguish between atabolism, catabolism, and metabolism. So basically in this one, what we're going to be looking at is recalling what each one is. So anab catabolic, right off the bat, a catacly cataclysm. Um, catabolic is going to be taking a molecule and breaking it down. Um, anabolic will be the reverse reaction, and metabolism, as we stated, is just the sum of all those reactions taking place. Thank you.